Well, maybe you can trust me because I, uh, I, spent, uh, I spent the 80s working in an industry that really is about trustworthiness and, and such. I, I was a copywriter on Michigan Avenue doing advertising. You can build some, I uh, did TV commercials for Kroger. I did TV commercials for Corona, for Corona beer. I did coupon ads for Veg All. <laughs> Uh, with Mike Ditka, I wrote a uh, radio on TV spots with him to, for Midway Airlines. Some of you guys flew on Midway back in the day. It's closed. It's gone now. Um, uh, did uh, uh, who? Anybody here like for Sun Chips? I was on the creative team. I led the creative team that helped name Sun Chips. I wanted uh, I wanted to call them Amber Waves. That was my Sun Chips was not my idea. It was somebody else's. But there you go. <laughs> um, at the same time, uh, ultimately my you know what? It's meaningless. Working on Michigan Avenue, I thought that was a dream job. Uh, my faith was growing at the time, and, and I might have got fired from that ad agency. <laughs> and I ended up at a little Christian media agency where suddenly I was doing uh, fundraising and promotion and uh, script writing for all these ministries. I put, you don't know Josh McDowell, more than a carpenter, evidence that demands a verdict. Oh, yeah. I, I produced his radio program for 14 years. So imagine my, my learning curve there. Uh, with Chuck Colson, every year I sat down with Chuck uh, for like 17 years and did a, uh, the, wrote and uh, directed and produced a radio special for Angel Tree, uh, where he gives, gives to prisoners, kids, kids, children, prisoners. Oh my God, the stories there, they still make me cry. But I, all these stuff, uh, I wrote, I co-wrote 4,000 scripts, 4,000 scripts for the National Center for Fathering, for Today's Father, and with Michael Tate and Toby Mack for uh, The Voice of the Martyrs, I did Jesus Reach Radio, uh, but um, let me tell you, God uses it all. I truly did get fired from Michigan Avenue, and he pulled me into Christian media, where my gifts have blossomed, and that's how, you know, maybe, maybe you can trust me. Maybe you can trust me because I look a little like Richard Dreyfuss. <laughs> oh, no, no, maybe you can trust me because I look a little like, Ber like a famous, a little, a little, look a little like Bernie, a little bit. <laughs> or maybe you can trust me because well, I'm a dad. Yeah, 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 because I married the cutest girl in town. Uh, I, you can trust me because I'm a dad. You know, we learn something as dads, right? Just the process of being a dad. There we are. The process of being a dad, uh, you can't help but learn stuff. Uh, but the biggest reason, gentlemen, that you are here today, you don't have to trust me. Uh, I might lead you astray. Uh, I am just a beggar who found bread. Things that worked as I was going through life, and I tell stories, uh, tell other beggars where to find bread. That's all we can do, guys. I mean, Find you know what, what works. Ah, this works for me, and, and 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 such. But even more than that, even so much more than that, trust your own life experience. God called you here. You're here for a reason. Trust Scripture. You guys know that. You guys have all been touched by moments of Scripture. Uh, trust the Holy Spirit. If you surrender your life to Christ, He's the, there's there's stuff working in you right now. If you allow it to, if you invite that, and if you're really looking for answers, you know what? There are spiritual giants in this room that don't even know it. Harvest, encourage one another. We've already heard that message. Encourage, encourage be, a, be a lion and, and, and share with each other and go pray. Okay, so we're all in this together. With that intro, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for every one of these guys here. They're here for a reason, Lord. And if we can, if, if, all, if me included, if, any, if everyone else can just believe with just one new thought, one something to grab onto, it's like, man, I remember that, that back in that. That February, that there was no snow on the ground, and I went to went to uh, that retreat of businessmen, and uh, there was, I remember that. That was life changing. So, Heavenly Father, we're gonna ask for your anointing here and make that happen. Amen. Amen. Let's kick around the idea of of uh, of the bucket list for 81 seconds. A little 81 second video. Let's see if this works here. What is on your bucket list? Stuff to check off before you cease to exist. Like see the splash of a humpback whale. Hike the Appalachian Trail. Chase a tornado. See an erupting volcano. 
stand on the equator, wrestle an alligator, dye your hair blonde, run a marathon, ride London's tube, solve a Rubik's Cube, dinner at the Ritz, give and get the perfect kiss, visit Stonehenge, Walk across Abbey Road with three friends. Scuba dive the Great Barrier Reef. Maybe just turn over a new leaf. Checking every box guarantees a full life is your destiny. Or you may look back and realize your bucket is empty. Maybe a better question is this. What if God wrote your bucket list? And you guys go, yeah, I want to do that. I want to visit Stonehenge. I want to walk across Abbey Road with three friends. Wouldn't that be a riot to do that? You guys, you all get that, right? You get that? For sure you do. Um, uh, uh, who, who here, who here has, has gotten the perfect kiss? Gotten the perfect kiss? There you go, Bernie, I knew you had. Uh, uh, how about some humpback whale? Who, who has seen a humpback whale? Amazing. Fantastic. Who has uh, um, uh, uh, hiked the Appalachian Trail or part of it? There you go. Fantastic. Uh, run a marathon? A few guys? Anybody? Run a marathon? What the? Why? Why? <laughs> um, uh, a few others. A few others. A few others. Uh, uh, I did this. I went down, to, went down to Florida with my kids. And you could, you could spend some money and, and see the dolphin show or even pet the dolphins, but I pulled out my credit card and I said, we're going to swim. And my, all my kids did the swim with a dolphin thing. Who has done that? Swim with a dolphin? You know what? Amazing. Swimming with sharks? No, thank you. <laughs> um, then there's, uh, you know, who's done this? Right in the hot balloon. Some of you guys have done that? Is it worth it? I've not done that. Is it like, like quiet? It's like quiet. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, how about uh, um, kissing under the Eiffel Tower? Anybody got a kiss under the Eiffel Tower? That's one of my kind of. Uh, right? Was it your Was it your wife? You know what? You know what? How about this one? Who's got their? Uh, who's this? A dream? A dream? For, I just did this. I just did this next one uh, four months ago. Applause, 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 applause. There you go. How about this? I mean, some things, some things are just dreams that will never be possible. But then some you live live long enough that they are, they do happen. Um, how, how about how about the uh, Cardinal fans, you guys? How about this one? Don't, gentlemen, who's done this? Uh, if you have a daughter, raise a daughter. Don't take this for granted. Don't take this for granted. You keep pouring into her and loving on her, kind of thing, because she may go some other way, but it's, it's amazing. Horrifying, terrifying, expensive, and amazing. <laughs> so what about that bucket list kind of thing? What are we talking about here? What's, a, what's on your bucket list, really? Before we go any further, we've been having some fun here. Make a mental note of some things that are right on your bucket list right now. You can even write them down, but make a mental note. Wow, James, yeah. So I, I would like to do that, yeah. Things that are on your butt, make a mental note, because if we have time, we're, we're going to be tight on time. But if we have time, okay, we may kick those around, and we're going to ask maybe if they are or not on God's bucket list. You know, probably some of them aren't. Some, but you know, God wants to, if you want to, if, if you want to ride, ride in a hot air balloon, God is not angry with that. It's just not on his bucket list. Unless you're going up with somebody and you're... As somebody that you're working on and uh, uh, going to lead someone to Christ up there and monster amongst the clouds, I suppose, that definitely could be. But the point is, there are things that are wonderful that God wants you to enjoy, but they're probably not on his particular bucket list for you. That's kind of where we're going today. So let's get back to that question, which is, uh, what if God wrote your bucket list? Um, several things. Now, this is very interesting. Now, track, track with me here. That, that are instantly coming to mind. If we started brainstorming right here, these are the kind of things that you would come up with. And we kind of already know they're on God's bucket list. Uh, things like 
volunteer in a soup kitchen. Absolutely. Uh, uh, read the entire Bible in a year. Absolutely. Uh, uh, visit the Holy Land. Absolutely. Mission work. Do that. Uh, prison ministry. Do that. Drop a Kruger in a Salvation Army. <laughs> and don't tell anybody. Could you imagine doing that? And not Who's done that? Good for you guys. I know several of you did. But you didn't tell anybody about it. That's a good thing. Wouldn't that be right to do that though? I haven't. Yes. But wouldn't that be just like... Well, it's pretty random. 300 bucks, you can buy one little gold coin. Yeah. Man, and then he makes the newspaper, and you, you go, hey, that was. No, you don't. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, well, I've lost my ability to advance my notes, so I'm going to see that my pants are now. Well, how'd that happen? That's no good. Mm -hmm. No. Okay, here we go. Okay, what's next? Um, here's the point. Um, all those things that I just flashed up there that seem like exactly right that would be on God's bucket list, that's kind of, those are great things to do. But here's the plot twist that we're going to spend the rest of the day doing. And that's you can work your butt off doing ministry. Pastor, somebody could drop you know five five grand in your in your uh, bucket you know next week, and it's great. But that doesn't get you to heaven. Amen. That doesn't. That's that's just doing something. Yeah. There are things that we have to do that truly are on God's bucket list. You still want you still want the five grand. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really interesting, kind of a, a twist here. Um, uh, we need to know God. We need to. Uh, Develop our, our Christian worldview. We need to surrender to Him. I love Psalm 127. Um, because unless the Lord builds the house, then the labor is in vain. The labor doesn't matter at all unless God is first and is motivating your every move, kind of thing. Um, I love this with, with dads too. It's the, okay, we'll talk about that later. Uh, once, you put, uh, once you put God in charge and surrender to Him, then your bucket list will become clear. Uh, that's why we're here today. Not just showing up, but with that big picture thinking that we can get only from God. A biblical worldview, not spinning our wheels. Invite the Lord to build your house, gentlemen. So with that in mind, where are we here? What if God wrote your bucket list? Um, some stories. Uh, uh, could someone grab me and get some water back there? It would be great. Um, when I was... Uh, Look at that. We're all good. Thanks, man. Did you drink out of this? No. <laughs> okay. When I was about 10, um, we uh, took a camping trip down from Chicago down to uh, Albuquer Albuquerque, New Mexico, where my, grandpa my grandparents, where my mom's parents were living there. And we did, did a camping trip. And we, and we didn't try to cover too much of me. You know, my dad, mom and dad planned out. Have to drive maybe 300 miles and get there over a course of five six days. Great time. On the way back, traveling west to east across the U.S., um, great, beautiful day. We started off and we drove through a, just a torrential rainstorm. It was only an hour, but we drove through it, came out on the other side. It was sunny on the other side. We went and pitched our tent, and uh, uh, it was a nice night, a nice dry night. And then what happened overnight? The storm came through. Koosh. So we got up and packed a wet tent, tried to set a wet campfire to cook breakfast. But it was a nice morning. The sun was out in the morning. And then we started driving east again. And there's a storm clouds up ahead, and we drove through the storm clouds. It was nice on the other side. Set up a wet tent. <sighs> through the night, the storm came through. We did that five times. <laughs> I can remember my dad saying, Kenny, my mom saying, Kenny, there's a storm ahead. Shouldn't we, maybe we should stop before the storm this time. <laughs> oh no, we got to make our... <laughs> so I'm 10 years old, I'm watching all this. One of those mornings, like the fourth morning was a Sunday. And I totally remember that we, uh, my folks felt like they needed to find a church to go to. Just... 
because that's what my mom and dad did. And 10-year-old Jake didn't, yeah, okay. We're on vacation, but okay. And so we pulled up as the last service of the day at this little chapel was kind of letting out. And so we missed the church service, but we went in the back and sat in the, old, the pews of this little, little church. And uh, little 10-year-old Jay suddenly understood at that moment, it wasn't about going to church, it was about who God was. God had, 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 had emphasized who he was, had taught me in the last four nights about his power. And again, there was something going on there in my wet clothes and... That morning, I will never forget that. We need to drive through the storm, guys, and come out on the other side and understand God's power and His presence and acknowledge that He is bigger than we are and He is, he is God and we're not. And it's not just driving through the storm. It's putting your trust in something that's bigger than you and that Jesus is the rock and a rain will come down and a storm is going to rise and a wind will blow against your house the house that you built, by the way, because in vain do the builders labor if the Lord does not build a house and it does not fall. It will not fall. Your lives will not fall. It might be confusing. It might be hard. But it's not going to fall because you built your house on the, on the foundation. Amen. All right. That's one story. Let's hear another one. Okay, so James 15 now. Maybe 16. Um, Jesus, 15. 15 16. Uh, at, at the county fair with Sally, not Rita. Rita, uh, Rita knows this story. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, and Sally is four inches taller than Jay. And I was short back then, too. And uh, I was walking down the fairway, the Kane County Fair, and one of the carnies at a little booth drops a, drops a card. Whoop, and paper, I go pick it up. It's for a free game. Can you believe that? Yeah, you guys are about eight steps ahead of me here. Um, all right, so, anyways, long story short, I'm throwing darts to the blue and the board, and he adds them up real quick, and he gets, oh, you've already got, you've got, already got 75 points. 75 points? If you get 100 points, you get, what are you, what are you not letting your head over here for? You've done this? Uh, or maybe you were the con man. It was you! Uh, what happened? What happened at a county fair? Uh, if you uh, get 100 points, you get the uh, you can have your choice of this boombox <laughs> or, uh, or a giant stuffed rabbit that I'm going to give to Sally. Okay. Long story short, I had 14 bucks in my pocket. He got all of it. <laughs> and Sally kept going, stop, stop, stop. Oh, I'm going to win you that rabbit. Silly, silly, silly. Um, and so I'm kind of mad, but I'm adding up the numbers like there's no way I had. I knew he was kind of me as I'm walking away. And Sally and I go, I make her stand at the other side of the gravel midway and watch as older guys, people in their 20s and 40s, are pulling out $20 bills giving it to this guy. So suddenly I didn't feel that bad. For four, that's a pretty cheap lesson. For 14 bucks, I learned that there's bad dudes. <laughs> that there's evil in this world. That this place, uh, that um, you just need to steer clear, gentlemen, of casinos and get rich quick see games. And you can't get up and go to. You know, if you want to buy a lottery ticket once in a while, that's fine. Give half the money to the church, that's fine. But don't get up dreaming that you're going to win the lottery. Right. You know, don't, don't. You know, just, you know, skip that. Put the bucket, the extra bucket, you know, give it to the bum on the street even. It's better than giving it to the lottery. Because you know what? If you won that lottery, it would kill you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It would. There's all kinds of scripture about get rich quick schemes. Well, the point is, here's the point. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders. If possible, even to you guys, God's chosen ones. They're going to appear, they're going to grab you, they're going to get you. Um, we can't stand up on our own power. Satan is alive and well, don't be fooled. There you go. Here's another one. Another one. I get fired. I've already kind of told you about this. Um, 
Uh, my first job out of college was I sold photocopiers for A.B. Dick. Phot Hi, I'm the A.B. Dick guy. But don't buy a Xerox or Minolta or Canon. Buy a buy an A.B. Dick copier. Um, who here's been fired from the job? F f fired from a job. Pretty good, huh? But worst day in your life? Yeah. And maybe the best day of your life, too, because God's got something else for you. It might be hard for a while. There you go. If you built your house on the rock. You see how these all fit together? You built your house on the rock. You know what? I got fired from that downtown job. Big effort. I thought I was, I had hit my, hit my stride. Creativity, big dollars, kind of fun commuting downtown. But my boys were home. I left the house at 7, got home at 7. It was hard. I got fired and ended up, ended up at a job 20 minutes away. I was home for dinner then. I mean, it was... And I was doing God's work. Unbelievable. Uh, God uses it all. Thank you. God uses it all. The good stuff and the bad stuff. You know that. Romans 8, 28. And all things work together for good for those who, for those who love God. For those who love God. Not all things work together for good for those who love God. Amen. And who have been called. You've got you to be called. You have to have the Holy Spirit in you. And... Uh, uh, according to his purpose, maybe not your purpose, Amen. but his purpose. Amen. I think I'd rather be in his purpose anyways, because my purpose will be a little bit warped. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Let's all take a moment to do this. Maybe to reconsider the rules carved in stone. I'm not sure about your church or you pastor, but some churches kind of spent a little bit too much time on the New Testament and kind of forget that the Old Testament has a lot of good stuff in it. And by the way, uh, what if what if God what if God really did carve ten rules for life on a stone and hand them to, to Moses of Mount Sinai? What if He really did that? I'm not going to ask you, but not all you guys in here can recite the Ten Commandments. But you know, stealing, coveting, sex outside of marriage. Worshiping false gods? Get those right. Get those right. Things start to fall into place. Rules? We don't need any rules. Uh, uh, just overview. Five of, five of the rules are about forbidding destructive human behavior. Two are kind of sentimental. Honor your parents and go to church on Sunday. Just kind of, it seems like a nice, but there we go deep. That goes real deep. Honoring the Sabbath and 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 uh, being aware of the of the of the legacy you're leaving. And uh, then three are about the character of God. He, he's he's the one and only. He needs to be first in your life. Amen. And even his name, even just his name is holy. Then there's this goal. Which is kind of the flip flop of, of well, it is. It's about surrendering. It's about um, yeah. my youngest son Isaac. Four, I have four sons and a daughter. My youngest son Isaac, Isaac, of course, is, is means laughter. God smiled. Uh, we nicknamed him Cartoon Boy because <laughs> he would put a pillowcase around his neck and dive off the the, uh, the uh, coffee table. This dog kid didn't work. Uh, one day he was out with Rita, they were in the garden, and there was a rake sitting there with its, the tines up, the teeth up. He stepped on it and smacked him in the head, and he says, it worked, it worked! <laughs> we are so, we don't, when's the last time you guys stepped on the garden rake? You're too smart for that. Oh, you are grown up adults and you are way too smart. No, no, we are still, we need to be. Let's admit our helplessness. Be more dependent on God, not less. Trust God more. I tell you, unless you, ch you change, become, become like little children. Not, not, not childish, but childlike. Not ignorant, but trusting God as our Father. Well, we're, we're going to get beat up. And when we're you know, full of doubts, we need to call on God as our Heavenly Father. He will protect and provide. Um, I'm not sure I have this time for this story, but I'll tell it anyways. 
Um, traveling salesman, I was. Any traveling salesman here? Anybody? Oh, got it. I, anybody stay in a Red Roof Inn? Anybody stay in a Red Roof Inn in Maryville, Indiana, back in the late, eight, in the early 80s? Because it was cold, slushy. You walk in your room at the Red Roof Inn in Maryville, Indiana, and it was hot and dry. And so Clever Jay, I turned on the hot water in the shower, let him, let him get some steam in the room. Brilliant, right? Yes. Brilliant? Yes. Brilliant? Yeah. Um, well, I left it on all night. <laughs> oh, you laugh. But I was I went down to check out. There was a bunch of really steamed, steamed, literally, it's, sorry, no pun intended, angry traveling salesmen who got up in the morning and there was no hot water for them. <laughs> True story. Oh, no. True story. Absolutely. Um, man, I should, I should I still be, be uh, oh, and of course I said, oh, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I didn't. Uh, there's nothing I could do, we're human, and, and I, I wasn't, it wasn't quite walked with the Lord quite back then. Okay, okay, so how can we turn a negative into a positive? Maybe that's the way, instead of beating ourselves up for past mistakes, let's turn a negative into a positive. So if you were seven, and you cut the prize roses from your neighbor's flower bed for your mommy, uh, don't beat yourself up for that. But maybe now, go, you know, bring some flowers to a shut-in, you know. If you, uh, if, you know, a few years back, you, uh, you got home from Costco or Jewel or wherever, and you realized that you hadn't paid for that giant bag of dog food at the bottom of the cart, well, you probably should have raced back, but you couldn't. You didn't have time that day. So that's hanging over your head. You're still guilty. No, go, go volunteer at the local dog shelter. <laughs> <laughs> or, or donate some money to something like that. Just do something like that. Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you got a girl pregnant 20 years ago. Or 30 years ago. 40. Or 40 years ago. Thank you. Maybe, uh, well, you know what you got to do. Maybe go volunteer at the local <laughs> crisis pregnancy center, or, or do something, or, or throw some, or be, make that part of your ministry. Um, maybe you sold cocaine back uh, when you were uh, in your early 20s or teens, whatever. There's ministry that you can do out of that. Of course, some of the great mission and ministry work is done out of, out of heart, uh, heart pain. Um, and, and, and I think that's kind of what this means. Uh, this is fascinating. You know who said this? It wasn't Jesus. It was John the Baptist. He was talking to the Pharisees before uh, before he would baptize Jesus. Um, he uh, he was said, uh, "Bear bear fruit in keeping with repentance." You you grew. He was talking to the Pharisees. You brood of vipers. You are nothing but words. He said, "You are nothing but words." So when you mess up, be repentant. But go beyond words. Take action. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, yeah, we need to apologize. You need to be good at that. If you can make it right, do so. And that's, you know, there's freedom in Christ there. Um, uh, we don't have time for this, but you know this. There are, don't, there are lots of stories about angels. Don't believe all of them. <laughs> but believe some of them. Uh, and don't forget to show hospitality to strangers who show up. For you might be entertaining angels without realizing it. Okay. Should that be on a bucket list? <laughs> uh, yes. Absolutely. Um, funerals of young people are hard. Funerals of young people are just hard. I, you know, I can't, you know. But uh, you've all been to good funerals, right? Yeah. And you've all been to really hard funerals. Yeah. And you've all, all, all been to funerals where the preacher says, he's in a better place now. And you're going, man, I hope so. <laughs> but from what I know of him, you laugh, don't laugh. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I mean, there's room for everybody in heaven. There's room for everybody, but the road is narrow. That's maybe the point. Yeah. 
There's room for everybody. There is. But the road is narrow. Um, so here, here you go. Um, I, I didn't cry at my grandfather's funeral. But I want kids to cry at my funeral. I want to be awesome. Uh, I, want, I know that the art of living well and the art of dying well are, uh, are uh, one. And on the topic of dying well, of course, is an even better quote. It's a little sarcastic. A little sar Jesus, you can imagine uh, uh, Paul being a little sarcastic, um, a little mocking tone. Oh, yeah, here we are. What this perishable body? That's what we want. Our perishable body, we want to put on the imperishable. This, this human body with, with aches and pains. You younger guys, man, turn 60, turn 65, the aches and pains. We're going to put on the imperishable. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Oh, death, where is your victory? Ha! <laughs> death! You've got no victory here. Death, you have Satan. You have no victory here. There's not even any sting in death. Because we're hanging out with God the Father before the throne of, uh, the throne of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, okay. So I hope all this makes sense. And our bucket list is God is our rock. God can use our failures. There's evil. We need to see it. God provides rules to protect us and provide for us. We need to trust him. Stop beating yourselves up. He wants us to fear death and live an extreme life. Is it making sense? Is it making sense? Okay, we'll do a little experiment here. Got about five minutes left here. I've come up with, with actually seven items for a healthy bucket list. Okay? Let's see if we can all start nodding at this. At this. So it makes sense. This is great stuff here. Little, would you like this little financial comfort, right? A little rest. A little ambition. You know, a little, a little ambition. A little, some influence. Honor. We want to be honored. Great sex. Wouldn't that be nice? And a well stocked fridge. Isn't that pretty good stuff? <laughs> pretty good stuff. Everybody nod their heads on this? Anybody ever nod their heads on this? Son of a gun. <laughs> Let's go back. Financial comfort. What do you guys want here? What's going on? Shoe ammo. Financial comfort. Uh oh. That's pretty close to green. That's pretty close. The rest. We like our rest, don't we? But that's pretty close to sloth. We like our ambition, right? A little ambition. But ambition is pretty close. Ambition, oh, oh I need more to keep up with the Joneses because. And then lust, instead of lust, this is my, I have five minutes left here, look at that, I have my little timer here, good. Um, and then of course a well-stocked fridge is gluttony. Let's look, there's another list coming up here that you will much prefer. So let's, when we start, when we start leaning on this kind of stuff, and we start sneaking over to the, um, the seven deadly sins, gentlemen, is not in scripture. You can kind of think, find it all in there, there's no list of seven deadly sins, so maybe some preachers don't really focus on that too often, but it's a pretty good list. So let's do this. Okay, so if we start to go this way, and maybe a little bit too far to go this way, um, maybe we should be doing the opposite. What's the opposite of all these things? Wow, look at that. Instead of greed, how to overcome greed? Let's be generous. How to overcome sloth? Let's, uh, let's, let's work a little harder and demonstrate that and show that and be that and model that. Um, what's the opposite of, uh, of uh, envy? A little more gratitude, guys. Look around. You guys, you know, do you guys, I know some of you guys live in uh, million dollar homes. Some of you guys are living trailers, for sure. Well, you still in top 1%, my golly. You're still doing okay. Okay? A little gratitude, a little gratitude. What was the pieces? Uh, opposite of peace. It's peace. Be men of peace. Bring big, bring peace to your your environment. Um, yeah, and we like to be proud. You know, we can be proud of our kids when they, you know, you know, score the touchdown or bring home the little trophy from something. But that's a different kind of pride. I'm talking about that self pride. So rather than be proud, let's uh, let's be a little more humble. And instead of lusting. 
you can last after your wife, I think. <laughs> but, but still, we need to maybe major with respect and faithfulness. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, instead of sloth, you sloths. Let's uh, work a little bit physically healthy. Not to show off, but to live long and be able to, to, to meet the needs. So there you go. Uh, are these things on your bucket list? Um, um, uh, um, <laughs> oh, well, uh, the whole point about doing the opposite is when Paul and Silas, I love this story. It's one of my favorite stories in all of scripture. In Acts, Paul and Cyrus are arrested and they go to the Thessalonica city council and they are accused of turning the world upside down. <laughs> They're accused of that. And I think that's something that I kind of want to do. Um, so with that in mind, um, I, uh, I'm 15 bucks a book, whatever. Uh, a really quick story, but so fun, fun, such a funny story. Most of my books were 52 things kids need from a dad, did very well. 52 things kids need from a dad. So 200,000 copies of that book. And so the publisher said, hey Jay, could you write a book for the same audience? And I said, what are you talking about? Well, I will, I will even give you the name, 52 Things Wives Need From Their Husbands. It's the same audience, same guy, we'll pick, pick up both books. Okay, that book sold well. So then we said, well, they said, Jay, can you write a book for women, for wives? 52 Things Husbands Need From Their Wives. And I said, well, how do I know what that is? <laughs> I know what that is. It's only two things. Um, and, and then, then, we did a, then they did, well, 52 Things Daughters Need From Their Dads and fathers need to fix your things to pray for your kids. And, and then I was having meetings like this, and people come up after we, afterwards, and I'm talking about being a dad. They go, Jay, 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 I'm in such a quandary right now. My, my kids are living on the other side of town now. And I, and I wait, you know, yeah, good. Uh, okay, I hear you. I heard for you. How's your, how's your faith life? How's your walk with God? And they, well, I'm not worried about that right now. I want to get back to my kids. So I realized that I needed to do another book. 52 things you need to do for yourself. Okay? Yeah. And I signed the contract. I still have the book contract. I signed that contract with the same publisher. 52 things you need to do for yourself. And then I'm writing it. And about two months later, they call me and say, Hey, Jay, that, that title is just too selfish. So can you think of a new title? And guess what that was? What if God wrote your bucket list? There's 52 things you need to do for yourself. <laughs> and, and, and the last punchline here is, they gave me another book. This sold well. They gave me another title. Jay, can you write another book? 52 things. Well, what if God wrote your to-do list? <laughs> and that sold well. Because bucket list is things you need to do sometime in life. To-do list is some things you need to do maybe this week. To -do, I need to do this. And then we, we got to came up with another title. What if God wrote your shopping list? And that didn't sell at all! I didn't even bring it anymore. Nobody cares about that one. All right, Heavenly Father. Uh, um, we got, uh, we should be done now, but, um, but I'm going to do this. We're good. If we have time, uh, do we have five minutes to kick around some ideas? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, pair up, just two, just, two, just two guys, two or three guys, and pick two or three of these things to talk about. Um, what might, what might be, what might be, blah, blah, blah. what might be two or three things on your bucket list that you came with, and maybe should they be or should they not be? That could be one to talk about. Or, uh, well, well, get time when God turned the loss into a game, or time when you came face to face with evil. We all have had stories about that. So just one or two stories. Let's play five minutes in conversation. Is that okay? Yeah. Five minutes, guys. Or maybe which of the seven deadly sins is your weak spot? Okay. There you go. I'm done. Applause, applause.